Hey, what's good YouTube? This is your boy Dr. ZZ and today we're gonna go through some questions about IELTS, also known as the IELTS exams. A lot of people have always have questions, so did I, about what is this exams, what's its relations to blab, and the rest of the thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and answer all the questions today. Uh, that way, like, next time if any of you guys see this video, it's gonna be much easier for you to know what it exams, this exam is all about. So starting off, what is IELTS? IELTS is a standard English exams that uh, PLAB actually requires you to do before you uh, do the PLAB exams. It basically testifies that you actually in your English language is good and you can actually do the exams. The first question that I need is do I need to do IELTS? The thing is a lot of people are in the misconception that the fact that everyone who is studying abroad internationally have to do IELTS but a lot of people don't know that some universities are actually exempt from doing IELTS which means that so uh, uh, GMC actually recognizes some universities as English speaking universities and you don't really need to do the IELTS exams. For example, like my university, I study in Russia and Crimea, is actually registered as a university which teaches in English. So I don't technically require IELTS, but then there is another document that they ask, supporting documents say, stating that 75% of the patient contact was in English. In my case, it wasn't. So that's why I need to do uh, IELTS. So what that means for you guys is that you guys find out if your university is registered in GMC and if you do need IELTS for your university. Chances are that you might, you usually do, but there could be chances that you might not need to do IELTS, which is great. So figure it out. If you don't really need to do IELTS, they might ask you for some supporting documents such as uh, patient contact, which was 75%, some kind of a letter from your university stating that most of the subjects and curriculum was in English. That way, it's gonna be much easier. If that's, the, if that's the option that you have, do it. Like, don't really need to do IELTS and you can straight away apply for plan. Coming back to the second question, what is IELTS? IELTS basically for me is a pain in the ass. Like, you know, it's an English exam that has to be done. It does nothing to do with medical medicine itself. It, it basically tests your English. That's basically it. So you have to just prepare for this exam and it just takes more time from your curriculum and your plans so yeah just a pain in the ass the third question that i had and a lot of people asked me was which ielts that i do now there are two types of ielts that is ukvi and there is uk ielts then there is academic and there is general training so the first thing you need to understand is you can do either of the two be it ukvi and uh the normal ielts the normal ielts I mean, that's what I think they call it, the normal IELTS. So either you can do IELTS or UKVI, and then there is general training and academic. Uh, first of all, you have to do academic for PLAB. General training is not required. You have to do academic. With that being said, the remaining two, either you choose UKVI or UK, you can choose either one of them. Just know that UKVI actually helps you to immigrate to UK, so you don't have to... Uh, do the IELTS exam again, whereas the IELTS does not. I personally am I'm planning to do UKVI because at the end of the day, I mean, you are planning to go to UK, immigrate or whatever. So I don't have to repeat the exam in that case. Coming back to the structure of IELTS, a lot of questions are, this is pretty much simple. I don't know, people don't really Google that much, but it's a pretty simple process. What does the IELTS comprise of? Well, IELTS, com IELTS comprises of four parts. That is the listening, the reading, the writing, and the speaking test, all in the following order. And about the, a little bit more about the specifics of the test, uh, the test comprises uh, of, the listening test comprises of 30 minutes, the reading is one hour, writing is one hour, and speaking should be around 20 minutes, I guess. The overall test is pretty much easy. I mean, a lot of people, if your English proficiency is good, and if you have been speaking in English, if you have friends who speak English, or if you've been studying in an English university, you should be able to pass it without a problem. But there is one more thing that you guys have to understand. That is what we're coming to the next point, the score. People don't really understand what the entire score means. Like this is where IELTS becomes a bit tricky. So you gotta pay some attention to what I'm saying. What IELTS, what, what PLAB requires from you is that it requires you to have a band seven in each of the following four categories. Meaning you need to have a band seven in listening. You need to have a band seven or more so band seven or more in reading, band seven in writing, and band seven in speaking. 
Anything below band seven in each of the four categories is a fail and then you have to repeat the exams. So let me explain a little bit more. So what it what PLAB requires from you is you need to have band seven in each of the following categories, in each of the four categories. And overall, which means the addition of all the four scores from the four uh, subjects have to total to at least 7.5. So now if you would do the math, I mean, let's say take this example. If you got seven in listening, you got seven in reading, seven in writing, and seven in speaking. You basically got seven in all of the bands. So you have passed, right? But no, when you take the average of it, it all totals up to seven. And they need an average of 7.5. So that's a fail. Now, if you take another scenario where you, where you have a band nine in reading, a band nine in listening, a band nine in speaking, and a band 6.5, in writing so overall your score will come up to around 8.5 ish but because you got 6.5 in one of the bands that's a fail so you need to repeat the entire exam again this is why it's very tricky and this is the main reason a lot of people who do uh, IELTS fail I mean as far as I've found out according to my knowledge speaking to people most of the failure happens in IELTS PLAB is people are much more prepared. It's a medical exam. They put all their work in and they prepare so they pass this exam with ease. But IELTS, most of them take it very easily. Most of the reason because a lot of you guys are English speakers and they believe that, well, I'm an English speaker, so I should be able to do it. Not really, guys. Understand that IELTS has its own marking system. All of the information is on their website, so they mark accordingly. So even an English speaker, or be it, even if you're from England, you can possibly get a low score. Don't forget, it's seven in each band and 7.5 overall. That is the least amount of marks that uh, PLAB requires. Coming back to the last point, this is actually an advice to you guys. I mean, I'm, I tell this to you guys because I tell this to myself every single day. Take this exam seriously because this exam costs approximately from around 150 bucks to 250 bucks, depending on which location you're taking this exam. So the thing is that even though like it's not a medical exam, you're going to be ending up spending money again and again to sit this exam. And I personally know a lot of people who actually had to do the exams two, three, four times. And I'm not saying that these guys did not know English. I mean, they went to English schools. The English was pretty good. The only problem was they did not study. So they had to do the exams again and again and again. So you do the math. One exam costing around 150 to 250 and you have to do it four times. That's a thousand dollars just waste. I mean, and once again, this exam does not mean anything. It's just a prerequisite for you to start taking the PLAB 1 exam. So my advice to you guys will be like, take these exams as seriously as possible. Like study hard, do your, do your readings, do your listenings, and do enough and more past papers because uh, that's the only thing which is going to give you the confidence and pass the exams in the first go as well. So one more quick tip that I will give you is that uh, you need to understand that Reading and listening is pretty simple. Like you basically do the exams and you have the answer keys and you can mark it and you would know how much you're getting. But for you to do well in writing and speaking, you need a f some feedback from another person. If you are good in speaking and if people tell you you're good, then speaking is not a problem. But writing, you need somebody, an English teacher who can mark your essays and give you feedback and how you can improve. Uh, I personally did find somebody, she was pretty cheap and she did a great job in giving me the feedback that I required to improve my IELTS writing exam. So I will put the link of her Facebook on the description below. So be sure to link, uh, click it and send her a message saying that you're from Dr. Rick, uh, Rick sent you and probably she will help you out from there. So yeah, it's definitely important that someone does give you feedback on your writing because I have a friend, he did everything good in all the subjects and he didn't really pay a lot of attention in writing. And what happened? He got a 6.5 in writing. So. You don't want that to happen to you guys. So that's why I make sure you get somebody to give you positive feedback or negative feedback or constructive criticism on what you're writing. That way you know where you stand and how you can improve. So that's very important for IELTS. Last but not the least, after you have done all the work that is necessary, just relax. Because what I have understood from my experience of studying for IELTS is that at the end of the day, it comes to confidence. If you have been getting good scores when you have been studying at home, if you've been constantly getting above 30s, which is 
band seven by the way if you've been getting constantly above 30 just relax because at the end of the day once you're confident in your exams you will go in there and you will smash it one thing i want to say please please take some time and do this exam in one go because the last thing you want to do is just keep on doing this exam and again and again it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money and it's a waste of a lot of energy so just put your work in study hard and go and get the exam done that way like at least you know you really gave it your best you know and you're done with it and then you can apply for plab so if you're watching this video on facebook so be sure to go into youtube and click that red subscribe button give me a thumbs up i make a lot of these videos only for the fact that i know a lot of people have questions and they need to turn somewhere to find answers that's why i came over here looking at you guys subscribing liking videos it really motivates me and i know that you know you guys are actually benefiting from my videos um don't forget to leave a comment below let me know which questions if i answered that helped you and if i did not answer any question leave the question below and i will answer it for sure and of course if you're on youtube just click the red subscribe button below and i'll be sharing much more really cool videos coming up that's about it guys this is your boy dr zizi signing off i will see you guys in the next video but until then make sure you keep grinding peace